Imagine getting paid just for sharing your thoughts on products and services you use every day. With Survey Junkie, it's that simple. Click on the link in the video description to discover how you can start earning today by taking surveys. We are two and a half hours into what most of this crowd would unhesitatingly call the greatest show on earth, when a vast white bed frame is wheeled onto the stage. The world's most bankable singer clambers aboard for her next number. I don't know this song. My daughter whispers that it's called Fortnite, but I definitely recognize the scenery. Where have I seen this before? Ah, uh, yes. It comes flooding back, July 2012 and the opening ceremony of the London Olympics. Danny Boyle's epic show involved a giant white bed on wheels during a homage to the NHS. Except Taylor Swift's bed is even bigger. But then everything about this show, called the Era's Tour, is on an Olympic scale. Indeed, Forbes magazine reports that American tour operators are currently selling five transatlantic packages to see Taylor Swift for each package sold for next month's Paris Olympics. Right now, Wembley is counting down to this weekend's Swift Quake as Miss Swift takes over the National Stadium for the first of eight sellout nights. It means that she is on track to fill Wembley more times in 2024 than the England team, and her show is twice the duration of a football match. So, ahead of her arrival in London, I went to see her in Edinburgh a few days ago in order to see what the fuss is all about. She is a phenomenon who, like an Olympiad or the Euros or, for that matter, the Pope, does not merely pack a stadium. She has the capacity to colonize an entire host city for the duration of her stay. There will be lots of locals at each concert, of course, but also many people who have flown in from all over the world. During my night on the planet Swift, I meet people from Japan, Germany, and China. I am not even the oldest person there. I meet an eminent retired high court judge who, as a barrister, famously acted for the late Diana, Princess of Wales. Sir Nicholas Mostyn, 66, is here as a bona fide, fully paid up, Swifty. The mood is entirely infectious. It is hard to recall a mass event as suffused with a wholesome, uncomplicated sense of joy as this one. At one point, there is a collective whoop which turns into an extended scream across the majority of this 73,000 strong overwhelmingly female, predominantly under, 25 crowd. And it just goes on and on, for reasons I cannot fathom. I am not sure Taylor Swift can either. She is sitting at a grass-covered grand piano in between songs. She has not even said anything when the crowd explodes into this rapturous expression of adoration. The singer puts on her, who? Me, face, a look of modest, bashful, Betty Boopish surprise which she has worn for much of the evening. The thing is that we believe it is real. This may be the slickest and most hyped music tour in pop history, with ticket revenue alone estimated at more than £1 billion, that does not include sales of £70 official hoodies, £11 pizzas, broadcasting rights worth gazillions and all the album sales. Yet, to the global Swifty diaspora, and even to a cynical old hack like me, she feels authentic, heroic, inspirational. She sings of all the familiar vulnerabilities and hopes of teenage girls and young women from the personal experience of one who has been through it all, she is now 34, and is still searching. To all of them, her appeal can be summed up in the words of Margaret Thatcher, one of us, albeit one with private jets, and a ventilated backpack for carrying her pet cat. Even her reported list of special requirements, known in the trade as a rider, pales before the demands of many a lesser diva, macaroni and cheese, licorice twizzlers and a Starbucks iced Americano every morning at 11 a.m. That's almost as good as Usain Bolt's admission that he won Olympic gold on a diet of chicken McNuggets. As in his case, though, there must be a very serious fitness regime inside the Swift camp. It is a huge stage and she seldom walks around it. She canters. Some artists surround themselves with dancers to convey an exaggerated sense of energy. Taylor Swift does the dancing too. Yet, in more than three hours of show, she is never out of breath when she sings and is off stage for no more than two minutes of costume changing in total. I spotted just one human frailty. As she sat down to play Crazier at a little after 10 p.m., she picked up a tissue and blew her nose. My immediate thought was to imagine the cost of the policy to ensure Taylor Swift against a sore throat. But her fans were having a fit of the vap.